Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Bill. Today we're going to talk about the variety of stars, the different members of the stellar family. And what better way to start than by looking at the nearest star, our sun. But please don't actually look at the sun. Yeah. We don't want anyone to go blind. Now, as everyone knows, the sun was discovered in 1839 by Frederick Sun, a German observer. He was also the first to discover the moon during a total solar eclipse. Ah, makes sense. But no, 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 we're just kidding. Yeah, we were just testing you. No, no, it's pretty safe to say mankind has known about the sun since, well, there was mankind. The sun is a type G star and has a temperature around 5,800 kelvins. It's pretty hot. It's a fairly average star. So what are the other stars like? Well, let's take a look at them. Stars can range from about 2,000 to 100,000 kelvins. Their sizes can range from equivalent to Earth all the way up to Saturn's orbit. But more on that when we'll return. Hmm. Our star is a G-type. And so what does that mean? Well, astronomers classify stars as O, B, A, F, G, K, and M types. These designations reflect the compositions of the stars. So they're separated based on what they're made out of. The traditional way to remember the sequence is, oh, be a fine girl, guy, kiss me. Or, another way, obviously bears and foxes get Caradog miserable. Or, Oregon berries are forged, groomed, killed, and maimed. Well, seriously, the, the order's kind of weird because astronomers originally began classifying stars by the strength of their hydrogen absorption lines. So A had the strongest, then B, and so on, through N. But then later, astronomers realized that different types of stars corresponded to different temperatures, and also colors. They rearranged the types so the temperatures would be in order. And so how were temperature and color related? Well, as any good chef or pyromaniac already knows... Nearest the wick, it's hottest, and blue-white. Farther from the wick, the flame is yellow, then orange, then red, as temperature cools. Coals from a fire follow the same principle. And have you ever noticed that even after the flame dies out, you can still feel heat coming from the coals? That's infrared radiation that you're feeling. Stars follow the same principle. Our sun is yellow and mid-temperature. Hotter stars are bluer, cooler ones redder. Scientists group all this information into the diagram we showed you earlier. This is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or HR diagram. Now that we understand temperature and color, you can see the same idea expressed here. Red stars, those are type M, are the coolest, and O stars, the blue ones, are the hottest. This diagram also plots luminosity. So, here at the bottom are the fainter stars, and way up there are the brighter ones. All right. So, here are white dwarfs, and these are pretty much just stellar corpses of stars similar to the sun. They're quite small, about the size of Earth. And this here is the main sequence. Stars lie on this region, or general line, while fusing hydrogen to helium in their cores. A giant nuclear furnace, as the saying goes. And up here are giant and supergiant stars. Astronomers have recently been finding stars even cooler and fainter than M-types. So these lie way down here, really off the chart, and they're L and T groupings. They're called brown dwarfs. And these things are pretty weird. Uh, they start to get us into the philosophical question of where does a gas giant planet end and a star begin? We'll cover the lives of the stars in a future episode. White Dwarf, White Dwarf, what are your plans now that you've shed your planetary nebula? Are the rumors about our companion true? But for now, we'll leave you with that. See you next time. Bye. As everyone knows, the sun was discovered in 1839 by Frederick Sun, a German observer. He was also the first to discover the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz. And I'm Bill. All right. All right. Let's get Kevin in here.
<laughs> this is the Hertzsprung Russell that I have. <laughs> when I hear Avril Lavigne on the radio now, I like to sing her songs an octave below. I think it adds a nice touch, you know. <laughs>